This call is now being recorded. Dr. NGR Educational and Research Institute, University, Madhurabol, Chennai. Thank you, Priyadarshini, ma'am. That's a, a warm good afternoon to everyone present here. I quote, that's the thing about books. They let you travel without moving your feet, I quote, by Jimpa Lehri. Today is a significant day that is August 9, 2021, a National Book Lovers Day. To celebrate this National Book Lovers Day, Dr. MGR Educational Research Institute, Department of English, is conducting a workshop on the topic, Bibliophile, the Art of Reading Right. I am immensely happy to invite Ms. R. Abhinaya, Assistant Professor, Department of English, to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Mom. Good afternoon to one and all present here. Reading a good book is like taking a journey. I would like to welcome our additional registrar, Dr. B.B. Jabarat, sir, who has been a constant support to our English department. Our Senior Dean, Department of English, Dr. R. Pushkala, ma'am. Our Dean, Dr. Mary Thomas, ma'am and our head of the department, Dr. Chandrasena Rajeshwaran, ma'am, our deputy HOD of academics, Dr. Julie Elizabeth, ma'am, and our deputy HOD of admin, Dr. V. Karpaga Vadivu, ma'am. Our today's guest, Dr. R. Vanita, ma'am, assistant professor, and no others college for women. And I welcome our faculty members and department of English and our students once again, I welcome you all for the online workshop on Bibliophile, the art of reading right. Thank you. Thank you, Abhinaya, ma'am. I take a great privilege in introducing our today's resource person, Dr. R. Vanita. Dr. R. Vanita is an assistant professor at Department of English at Anadish College for Women, Chennai. She did her postgraduate studies postgraduate studies and besides being the topper of her class, she was also the recipient of Miss Meyer's Memorial Prize and the Lady Pentland Prize for all-round proficiency. She has been a trainer for Business English and for the Verbal Aptitude Component for CAT exams. She has been a part of the team that worked on a new syllabus for the BA Communicative and Professional English last year for Arts and Science Colleges in Tamil Nadu and has also contributed to the new syllabus for BA English stream of the University of Madras. She served as a teaching fellow in the non-fiction category of the Kenyon IITN writing workshop conducted by Kenyon College, Ohio, US, and at IIT Madras at the IIT campus in 2019. She is associated with Cambridge Assessment English as a resource person. Apart from publishing creative and critical writing in reputed journals, she has also contributed to book chapters. At the college, she is the faculty coordinator for Ambrosia, the literary discussion and debating forum, and it's also in charge of the community outreach program of the department. Her areas of interest include creative nonfiction writing, literary theory, women's studies, and contemporary literature. Ma'am, we, the Department of English, are very happy to welcome you as a resource person for this workshop. Thank you. Um, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Indra, for that introduction. And uh, it's a great privilege and honor to be here at Dr. MGR University. 
I thank the opportunity that has been extended to me. Uh, this has been a privilege to talk before you and to try and see how we can look at reading. Uh, just a disclaimer, this uh, is meant, uh, I prepared this whole presentation from the student point of view. So I hope faculty members will also benefit. So uh, can we start? It's been really nice to hear this introduction to see so many people uh, interested in reading and try and see how we can go about this. Okay. So uh, before we begin, I hope this works. I, I'm going to work on this app called Kahoot. Okay. Uh, what you have to do is, uh, this is a, a sort of a, a small quiz. Okay. So if you can go and type in Kahoot.it on your phones or on your laptop. Okay, you have to have two devices here, one to see the question that I'm displaying here and to answer on your phones. Okay, so try and see for five minutes if you can have two devices, it will be helpful. Okay, uh, just go and type kahoot.it on your phones. There's a short quiz which we do through this app called Kahoot. You can even download the app. Okay, I'll, I'll just put it on the chat box, one minute. You can either go through the Kahoot app or Kahoot.it. This is for the conduct of the quiz. The short quiz that I've done on uh, English history. Don't go into kahoot.com. That's for asking the questions. For answering the questions, you just have to log into kahoot.it. It'll ask you for a game pin. Ma'am, many of them are asking about the game pin, ma'am. Oh, ah, yeah. I'm typing in the game pin here. One minute. Just type in the game pin that I've put on the chat box. I hope you can see the tab and uh, you're getting into the app. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So if we can join fast, we'll start the quiz.
you just have to go to kahoot.it or the kahoot app and type in this game pin you will get into this game we have only seven participants right now so indra can you help the others get into mode yes ma'am you can click on the uh, kakoo dot in uh, website and you can go there and put your game pin you can enter your nickname and you can get through this i think many of them are trying now ma'am it's so just kakoo dot it that is all We have ten participants right now, so if some more of you join. We will start the game. Okay, we've got twelve participants now. So, Indra, can we start? Mom, can we start the game? Yes, ma'am. We can start. Okay, there are only uh, twelve people, so uh, the uh, competition will be twelve people only. So. The others can join, and it's only with your nickname. So nobody needs to know who you are. If you win, you can uh, disclose your actual name. Otherwise, it's fine. Any more people want to join? Want to give it a try? This is for literature students, so this is on British history. This is just a warm-up exercise before we go on to the actual presentation. So we'll start. Okay.
So this is the game board. Shatrupa is on top now. has never been a colony okay they've only colonized so there's no independence day this is a googly question so now bala's on the, the leads the table is leading now but it is 10 questions so this is the fourth question out of the 10 so if you need to know british literature you need to know british geography Yogesh is still leading. Bala is now leading. on top of the table now, Shantarupa. So we're on to the seventh question out of the ten question. Is still leading. Hemophilia. Hemophilia is the condition, a genetic condition where the blood doesn't clot. That is how most people, you know, men died in battle and uh, the British dynasty is filled with queens. You find a lot of queens because the men died in duels, the blood won't clot. So all the blood will lose out in a duel and they'll, you know, they won't survive. So um, British history has a lot of queens because of hemophilia. One factor. So Shatrupa still leads. Uh, we are on to the ninth question. There's just one more question. Okay. William the Conqueror apparently was illiterate. Okay. He never knew how to read and write English. Since he came from Normandy and he was French, he knew uh, to speak French. Okay. So it wasn't even proper French. He just knew how to speak French. 
He didn't know how to read and write English. French also. He just knew how to speak French. So he is now on top. He so last question. So this will decide the winner for the race press. Sorry. For this question, I think I'll give the answer before time. So none of you could answer. I'm sorry. So this question wasn't actually given to you. So it will be nine questions only. I'm sorry. I. So the winner, third place is Bala. Second place is Shatrupa and the first place goes to Fakir. Okay. And the runners up are Yogesh and Surabhi. Okay. So. So I guess uh, the ones who played the quest enjoyed the quest. Yes. Did you enjoy the quest? The ones who played and the ones who saw the quest. Yes. Okay. So it's a very simple game. You can go to Kahoot and create your own quest. Okay. It, uh, this no specific requirement, no technical skills required. You can just uh, play it. You know, any time you want to. Uh, we do this in class as a ice breaking thing before we start the actual session so that uh, students are interested in everybody can attend and since you have this nickname option the main advantage of this is that you don't have to reveal yourself and supposing you don't fare well nobody knows who you are so only the winners come in and the runners up come in and uh, you will know the right answer so it's a quiz where you know the right answer so you won't repeat the uh, same mistake again or no uh, so that way you learn a lot of things. So before we do a class or as soon as we finish a class a few times after that, we do this. So this is something that uh, we do as an icebreaker. Okay. So uh, I'll start off with the presentation. Ma'am, shall I present yes, the PPT? Yes. Ah, uh, will you be able to present? Can you go full screen? I'll do it through laptop. Um, I have stopped screening through my phone. Oh, I'll do it okay. through laptop. Okay.
ma'am ah, the screen yes. is shared ma'am so we are with the topic w5 the art of reading right so this is uh, how to start reading and what you need to read and how to get into the reading habit so this is more about getting into the reading habit and trying to you know develop the idea of reading itself into your head so make it a part of your system okay, so that's the primary idea of this talk to make you into bibliophile so you have to start reading right to become a bibliophile to fall in love with books okay, next slide so can you go full screen now Uh, Priya, ma'am, I think you have to click on to the uh, full screen yes. near the percentage. It's the full screen. Uh, participants couldn't see the change of slides. Okay. Okay. Ma'am. Ma'am. Can I? Can you just make it a little bigger, ma'am? Go full screen. Um, uh, Priyata Shri, ma'am. Ah, uh, yeah. Increase the percentage of the screen. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at developing a reading routine. Uh, uh, the reading habit. If you want to make a, a reading a habit, you have to have a reading routine or a reading culture. Okay, so you have to get into the habit of reading and develop a reading routine or a culture. And to do this, you need to have. Uh, you also have to choose the right kind of reading material. Okay, what do you read? How do you read? And why do you read? Okay, so you need to choose the right kind of reading material. Only if these two things are done, you get your reading right. So to get your reading right, you need to have a reading routine. and you need to choose the right kind of reading material to be able to read next slide okay so we hear this all the time like uh, meri ma'am mentioned uh, before we started uh, people don't read anymore this is a constant refrain that we hear from all quarters people are not reading anymore it is not just younger people older people it's across generations and uh, reading is at an all time low now Okay, we're not able to see people read a lot. Okay, so we're hearing this all the time. So, what do we do about this? Yes, next slide. Okay, uh, but why are we able to do all this with attention? Okay, we are able to do this with attention and complete concentration. We watch movies with absolute attention. We binge watch series. Okay, uh, on Netflix or Prime or whatever. Okay, we play video games and we follow YouTube channels. We subscribe to them and we religiously, you know. watch the whole video from the beginning to the end okay so even if a person the person you're following uploads every day we're able to do it okay we're able to do all this with absolute concentration and attention then why are we not able to read okay because these things are done without distraction with absolute attention in fact uh, you're oblivious to your surroundings when you do this but why are we able to read when we can do this with attention next slide okay why are we interested in basically something that's a video content okay you are interested and involved in a video content because it's exciting it's interesting uh we want to know how things proceed and how it ends okay how a, a particular video game that you are looking at how does it end how many characters are alive dead at the end of the game okay and uh, if you're looking at uh, anything okay if you're looking at a youtube video you want to see how it goes uh, or a movie or anything like that you're you want to know how it ends when you start okay and then there is the visual appeal and animation there is movement there you see it animated okay so you see movement there there is obviously the visual appeal and then there is an abundant choice you can see watch anything that you want to at any time that you want to in any place that you want to so there's a lot of choice in terms of what you view what you see okay and then uh, everything begins with a teaser or a trailer okay a movie or uh, you know a video game anything you just have a prelude to it you just have a trailer or a teaser or something like that to invoke your curiosity 
that is why you, you are more interested in the visual content rather than books okay so how can we recreate this content in a book there is excitement when you read okay when you start reading you realize that there is a lot of excitement when you read and you also want to know how a book ends okay the only confident here you have abundant choice it, it, with books you have a lot of choice you can choose what you want to read and uh, the blurb okay the blurb is a sort of summary which you find you know uh, a sort of uh, two line description of what happens in the book at the uh, usually it's sometimes at the cover page of the book or at the uh, back cover of the book you find that okay so you have a teaser or a trailer a blurb with uh, that you find in a book the only thing that you don't have in a book is the visual appeal and animation except for graphic novels and picture books okay picture books mostly for children and graphic novels except these two we don't actually have a visual appeal or animation so how do, how do we work on only this aspect because this is the only aspect that differentiates you know other forms of viewing like videos or movies the things that we are interested in from reading so how do we look at this we have to look at only that one component that visual appeal and animation how do we work around that when it comes to reading books okay so what do we do for everything that we read we need to have an imagination we need to pictureize things this is normally done but because we are we have an information overload you know a sensory overload some of us are not able to visualize what we read okay so it's important when you read you start with something that works on your imagination that helps you imagine and then when you start reading even the visual component comes alive in a book because that's the only difference between a video and a book where the visual component is not there so you can compensate it by start reading where there's a lot of usually good writers all good writers give a lot of description about the place that you are in okay so they give you the surroundings they give you the environment they give you minute details all observed details are there you know so if there is a spoon if there is a spoon on the table how is this spoon what is the color of the spoon who placed the spoon is there a drop of you know a ghee or water on the spoon all these descriptions are done okay so you can if all good writers give you a sense of place give you help you understand create a visual effect in your mind so you can if you follow all this just like how you watch a video you'll be able to enjoy a book next slide okay so uh, the opening line like a teaser you'll have it has to be unique and it has to be appealing in a book i've selected some of these lines these are very common lines but these are the ones that make you look at a book and say wow there should be something interesting about this book okay so the first one is from good old david copperfield written in 1850 whether i shall turn out to be the hero of my own life or whether that station will be held by someone else these pages must show this is how the book begins okay so there are amazing opening lines but i've chosen three because these three are the books that are familiar to you you know you know them okay so it was a bright cold day in april and the clocks were striking 13 okay this is how the novel 1984 begins george orwell's 1984 begins with saying the clocks were striking 13 of course today 13 is like i mean with our digital and analog clocks 13 is not a number uh it's not very different anymore but then this is the way the novel starts so it hooks you uh happy families are all alike every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way this is anna karenina okay this is from anna karenina so how do you choose a book one way in which you can choose a book is to see whether the opening line appeals to you see there are some books which may have very very uh, unappealing opening lines very prosaic very stale but still good books but for starters you can look at a book where you know the first line impresses you the first look of the book impresses you so just like how you have a teaser or a trailer for a movie you can have a uh, look at the first line of the book and decide whether you want to read the book so this is not exactly a full proof way of identifying a good book but this is one of the ways where you know that there is something different in the content okay this is not a usual kind of book so if the first line is different the rest of the book is going to be different yes for next slide. next slide can we move on to the next slide okay so since we are all also obsessed with seeing movies and we were so overloaded with visual content must understand that all great movies movies with wonderful ideas movies that have a innovative plot line or movies that make you think out of the box all of these have come from good books okay great movies have been made from good books 
I've chosen the ones that uh, are visually very appealing. Okay, we looked at them for visual appeal. Okay, so uh, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Jurassic Park, Godfather. You can name a lot of movies. Okay, and if you look at regional literature, for example, Tamil movie makers, you can uh, uh, know that you know this uh, award-winning movie called Visarayan was made from a book called Lock Up. Okay, and uh, the recent one, okay, Asuran was made from a book by Poomani, uh, and it's called Vekkai. Okay, so even regional writers, okay, whether you read Tamil or even in your regional language, if you read translation or if you read the original text, this is about reading. So language shouldn't be a barrier for you to read. You can look at how great movies are made from books. Okay, so it's not just about English; it's about regional languages also. Usually, films with substantial content. Films that make you think, even after a long time after you watch the movie, it stays with you. Are movies that have been made from good books, okay? Because there is characterization, there is a plot line, there is a wonderful idea behind the writing of a book that gets translated onto cinema. So the you know, the big books that you see, the uh, movies that you admire, have all come from books. So that's one more reason why you need to get into the reading habit, okay? So you'll appreciate the visual. Translation, the movie adaptation of the book better if you read the book. Yeah. There are lots of examples. I've just chosen three because these are the uh, the ones that have had a lot of visual impact on us. Yes, my next slide. Okay, choose what you like to read. Everyone is a reader. Some just don't haven't just found the favorite book yet. Okay, so it's important that you choose what you want to read. Okay, so yes, ma'am, go back. Yeah, of this slide. So uh, everyone is a reader. Some just haven't found the right book. Why are we saying that? Is because each of us has we have our own tastes in reading. Okay, not all of us like the same kind of books. So it's really important to understand which is your favorite book. For that, you'll have to read a few books, read a few pages, look at a few pages, see. Don't throw away a book after ten pages. Okay, just wait. Some books take a little time to warm up, just like how some movies are. Okay, so it takes a little time. You give that time, and then see whether the book appeals to you. If the book appeals to you, continue to read. And it doesn't matter whether you read the same you know, kind of books all the time. As long as you're comfortable with the reading, it's fine. Okay, you don't have to read what is famous or what you know, everybody is reading. You can have your own group in terms of reading. Yes. So next slide. So which is the best genre to read? Okay. Um, this is the question that people keep asking others. Okay, what genre is better to read? Because we are literature students, so what do we read? A play, a poem, uh, you know, is fiction better? Is a novel better? Most of us stick to novels because it's easy and it's comfortable, and you can put it down any time. Novelas, short stories are more popular. Okay, but there is nothing like uh, the best genre to read. This is a a known answer, but yet I'm telling you this because most people have, feel. Should I read something because this is good to read? Okay, there's nothing like that. It's only your interest and it's only your inclination that helps you choose the genre. Okay, uh, I've specifically had students who've not been literature students who've loved Shakespeare and who've gone on to you know watch Shakespeare plays and uh, do things with Shakespeare. They they haven't actually been literature students. They've been uh, you know probably math students, they, students like that who come from other departments who do general English with us. They Kind of get into uh, liking Shakespeare and they read Shakespeare. So it's not like you have to be a literature student to be able to enjoy something. Or if you are a literature student, you are expected to follow certain classics and enjoy them. Okay, it's fine as long as you choose something that you are comfortable with and you enjoy reading. The whole process of reading itself becomes a habit only when you enjoy the process. Yes, ma'am. Next slide. Okay. Uh, when you think uh, uh, reading is boring, you are disinterested, you sleep off when you read, uh, you don't uh, seem to carry on with the reading that you have, uh, you're not doing it right. So you have to find the right book, you have to find the right genre, you have to find the right time to choose the right book and then you will get into the habit of reading. Okay? So choosing the right book is the core. And how do you choose the right book based on your interest, based on what you enjoy? So you need to spend time first understanding what you want to read. Yes. Next. Okay. 
Uh, so you got to believe this when it comes from the creator of Harry Potter. I do believe something very magical can happen when you read a book. Okay. So uh, J.K. Rowling has said this because she has created Harry Potter and uh, the whole magical world of Harry Potter has come alive before our eyes through the book. So every detailing has been there in the book. That is why it's made a successful series. Okay. So why was the movie series successful? It's because the book itself had all the details. So every detail that you see in the movie has been you know, done in the book. She's given all that in the book and that's how the movie got made. Okay. So it is magical. Reading is magical and you need to enjoy that magic. You need to be perceptive to it. Next slide. This is what was uh, uh, Indra said when she started off. So the thing about book is this is especially true in the present time when we have lockdowns and you're not able to travel, you're not able to move around. We are, our travel is very, very restricted. Physically, where uh, places that we used to travel, the places that we used to see, we're not able to see anything anymore right now. Okay. We are traveling itself has become a constraint now. In the present times, especially in these pandemic times, in these times, it's very important that we read books because it takes you to places where uh, sitting in your, the comfort of your home. So this is a cliched idea, but it's still very true because it transports you to another world. Yes, my excellent. Okay. So uh, I think the print is small. Uh, I hope you can see it. Okay. So what not to do when you want to read a book? Okay. So this is don't read. So don't read a book because it's famous or it's won a prize. So we have this idea, you know, that I need to read when it's a Pulitzer Prize winner, a Nobel Prize winner is writer. Usually those books are good, but they may not appeal to you. Okay. Read something that connects with you. Okay. So don't read something just because it's famous or just because it's won a prize. Okay. Uh, don't read because your best friend says it's brilliant. Okay. Uh, movie watching, we depend on friends. Your friend says it's a good movie, you go and watch. Okay. But that's only three hours. But a book is a... A, a longer investment okay you need to be invested in the book for a longer period of time so uh, don't read because uh, just somebody says one person says if there are a lot of people who you have who say this book is good maybe you should give it a try but not for just one person and just because you want to impress your friend okay don't read because it's supposed to make you seem intellectual sometimes you know when uh, a lot of people say i read uh, this person okay i read vikram seth or i read salman rushdie uh, you know un unless you like them don't read them just because you want to sound intellectual, just because you want to be acknowledged by society, don't read anything. Don't say I've read anything. Okay. Don't read because it's prescribed as a past of your academics because that will be, you uh, You will have to enjoy the process. Okay. Most books that come in the academic circle are brilliant books. Okay. These books have been vetted over time and uh, they are brilliant. Okay. But if you cannot plow through, don't push yourself to reading it. Okay. Don't read it because you bought it or it was gifted to you. So people have this uh, habit of gifting books, okay? And Amazon and, you know, all your aunt or there are several places where you can get them very easily. And people do gift books now very easily, okay? So don't read because you bought it or because it was uh, gifted to you. Just because you bought it, don't, don't read it, okay? If you don't like it, don't read it. And don't read because the author is well known. This is another thing, picking up a book by the author, okay? That doesn't make a good book. A good book, is something that you enjoy, that you read, and it's a very personal experience. It's a personal experience. It's a connect between the reader and the book. Okay, so the reader and the writer get connected through the book, and it's a very, very a deeply personal experience. Okay, so it needn't be something you can share it with others, but uh, at some level, a book connects with you, and uh, that connect is only between one reader and the writer. Okay. Yes. Next slide. Uh, we we'll go back and uh, no the ne uh, the previous one. Okay, next one. After this, ah, uh, what you should read. Uh, go with what you should read. The previous one. Uh, can you just make it to the uh, yeah? What you should read. Uh, why should you read? You should read because you like it. It's very, as simple as that. It gets down to the, we go down to the basics, okay? So you read it because you like it. There's not, no other reason that you have to, you know, to have to read a book, okay? You read it because it uh, holds your attention. Uh, you like a book when you uh, like a book, uh, you're able to read it without distraction. You want to finish it, like how you see a movie or play a game. If you like it, you will complete it. That is one way of ascertaining whether you like a particular book. Okay, if you're going to finish it, if, if you look forward to finishing it, if you look forward to reading it and knowing what happens in the book, then that's a good way of understanding that uh, you've connected with the book. 
uh, read because uh, you're able to connect with the book, with the content. Okay, don't read something that's totally disconnected with you or you don't identify with or you feel it's out of the world. Okay, connect with something where there is at some level you you know you have a fascination, you have an appreciation for what the content. Okay, read because you're involved with the characters, with the theme, with the idea, with the language, with the style. Okay, there should be some way in which you are connected with the book. There is an emotional connect that the reader and the writer establish through a book. Okay, so that connection should be there. You should be worried about why this character is crying or why this character is laughing. You want these people to, you know, lead a happy life. You don't want them to, you want them to come out of the troubles that they are in. Okay, you should feel connected just like how you watch a movie. You feel connected, you know, with the movie. The same way you need to feel the connection with the book. And this is a very, very emotional connect. Okay, you should be invested in the characters in the book, especially when it's fiction. Okay, with non-fiction, it becomes all the more important because it's real. Okay, non-fiction is real, and non-fiction helps you understand the world around you much better. Okay, you look at other people's lives, and people are writing about things that are happening around you, so it's much more real. With fiction, it's more of an identification with the characters and their plight, and you know what they go through their happy times and their sad times okay and you feel happy when they're happy and you feel sad when they're sad but with non-fiction it's more of a reality check okay so whatever you're reading and uh, you don't have to even read a book you could start with a blog you could start with uh, you know a podcast okay audio books are so popular now but should you choose audio books uh, uh digital books so that's a question that we need to ask ourselves digital books audio books and physical books physical books are any day better because uh Digital books are, they don't have a memory. You don't have a memory with digital books. What you read, you forget. Digitally, uh, your memory, uh, there's nothing that your brain stores what you see digitally because it's all the same. In a physical book, you underline, you you know, you know mark a passage. You do something about the book that makes that memory of that book alive. So people can quote when they read from a physical book, but they're unable to quote when they read from a digital book. Okay, uh, but digital books have their advantage. They have their advantage of space primarily and you can read any time. All those advantages are there. You know the advantages, they are numerous, okay. But a physical book will enable you. Buy a physical book, it will have, you will want to finish it. You will have a sense of, so the feel of paper, all that is stone, okay. Uh, we've, we've been talking so much about the smell of paper, the feel of a good book. All that is something that we relish. But the primary idea why I want you to look at a physical book like so many others is because a physical book helps you remember, helps you quote, helps you sit and think about a line. You read a line, you think about it, you go back and then go back to the book again. You don't just read through, you know, completely. A digital book doesn't give you that space to think, contemplate and ruminate. You don't stop at a line, you pause and then you think, you know, why is this line here? Can, uh, how has this author written this line? Why is this line so beautiful? Or why is this line, you know, so hard tugging? Whatever, okay. It gives you time to ruminate over that line before you move on to the rest of the book. Okay, that doesn't happen with physical books. And audio books, the disadvantage with audio books is that audio books are only for people who drive long distances. Okay, just so that you don't, you know, uh, waste your time, you don't fall asleep, you uh, listen to a book and you travel. So audio books are primarily for people who travel a lot. Uh, you're waiting at an airport or you're waiting at, uh, you know, some place. And uh, you want to, you're traveling, you're driving, only then you prefer audiobooks. Otherwise, uh, audiobooks are, uh, again, they have this disadvantage of a digital book where your memory is lost. You don't have memory of anything that you read. It's fine, it's good, it's over. But you can't recollect a sentence, you can't recollect a word, you don't connect with the characters, you don't have to have the time to think, ponder, contemplate about what you read. And the primary idea of reading is for you to develop your thinking habit. Okay, so we talk about critical thinking, we talk about creative thinking, we talk about so many kinds of thinking, lateral thinking, out of the box, thing, box thinking. So there are so many things that we talk about in terms of thinking. All this thinking comes from reading books and physical books, there's nothing that beats the physical book when it comes to it. Okay, so the more you read, the more you think. And every thinker, before they come up with their own ideas, are people who read a lot okay they know what's there and before they come up with their own ideas yes next one okay uh this is a japanese word sundoku is a japanese word which says uh, uh uh it's the art of i'm reading it's the art of leaving a book unread after buying it typically piling it up together with other such unread books okay a lot of us are guilty about this we do we buy books with the intention of reading but we don't read them okay those who buy physical books, those who still buy physical books, we uh, buy them, but we don't read them. So in Japanese, there's actually a word for it. Okay, this word implies 
I, the meaning of the word is that you buy the book but you don't read it okay so it's such a common habit that in japanese there's actually a term for it so uh, we need to shrug off this and try and see if we can you know read at least the ones that we like okay and not buy okay before we finish the ones that we already have please next slide next slide Kind of overlapping. Okay, can you go to the previous slide? So, if you don't have the time to read, you don't have the time uh, to write. Okay. So, the one thing, uh, I think, uh, they just move on. No? Okay. Uh, the one thing that is common to all great writers is they are great readers. You know this. So, every people who read all the time, you know, who read a lot. Okay. Eventually, they know that they have something to the world. They've thought about a few things and they need to share what they know to the world and they become writers. So, all great writers are great readers. Okay. So, they begin as great readers. This is something that we know, but uh, it's so important that I'm stressing it again. Okay. The best uh, you may want to know, I'm, I want to become a movie director. I'm not going to write a book. Even then, you should know. The best movie directors are also great readers because this is where their scripts usually come from. Okay, so if you look at uh, Christopher Nolan's movies or any of these movies, you know, uh, Dunkirk, Prestige, any of these movies or any anybody movie. Okay, so if you look at IMDb, the top ones are the ones that have been made from books. Okay, so we discussed a few, and if you want to direct a movie, again, you need to start with a book. Okay, so there's so many people who are interested in starting their YouTube channels, their own channels, making short films, making movies. There are lots of people out there who have these ambitions, who are nurturing these ambitions. So even for them, you know, you'll have to start with being a reader. The more you read, the better your movie is going to be. So you don't definitely have to be a writer. You can also be a reader if you want to. Be. So if you don't have the time to read, you don't have the time to write. So good readers are good writers as well. So my concluding slide. Yes, the last slide. So in conclusion, start reading and never stop reading. Okay, so if you haven't started, start reading. And if you uh, are reading, please don't stop reading. Okay, make a time for it. Keep a routine and keep reading. And then uh, you will probably be a good reader. Yes. So that's my last slide. So it's a very short presentation. I hope you found something useful from this presentation. Uh, okay, so... You can close the presentation. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, that was wonderful yes. presentation. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed and we got a lot of wisdom of how to choose and what to choose to while reading. And uh, students and the participants, now it's Q&A session. If you have any doubts regarding the session, you can, you can ask the resource person. You can post your questions or queries in the chat box. Any questions from the participants? Participants, do you want to do one more uh, Kahoot quiz? I'll send across one. Uh, I'll send one across. Okay, another 10 questions probably. Yeah. I think this session may take a little time. So I'll send it across and uh, maybe they can wait for you. Is there anything else? Um, thank you, ma'am. I think there is no questions from the participant okay. side. Um, now I call our department staff, Ms. K. Priyadarshini, assistant. Professor to deliver the order thanks.
thank you indra ma'am a graceful and warm good afternoon to one and all gathered here and it's my privilege to have been asked to propose the word of thanks on this occasion uh, i on behalf of the pangia educational and research institute and the entire fraternity of the college first of all i extend my most sincere thanks to the law board and on my behalf i extend a warm a hearty word of thanks to our resource person who spent a valuable time uh, in our busy schedule to grace the occasion thank you ma'am a uh, special mention to our founder chancellor uh, dr ac shanmugam and engineer ac sarun kumar sir our honorable president for being the catalyst that inspired us to do our best and stand as a pillar of power i extend my thanks to our provost dr gopal krishnan and our vice chancellor geeta lakshmi ma'am for your grad i mean for your constant support uh, i extend my thanks to our reg registrar dr cp palani velu and our additional register hns dr malani pande for your motivation and constant support and i extend my sincere thanks to dr l ramesh joint register events and uh, dr dv jabaraj additional register of uh, ens for your motivation and your unflinching support and i heartily well I extend my sincere thanks to our senior dean department of english dr r pushkala our dean department of english dr mary thomas our uh, head of the department dr m chandrasena rajeshwaran our deputy hod academics dr julie elizabeth ma doc deputy and our deputy hod administration dr v kapahwadiwo for the unflinching support and our uh, for their guidance and i thank one and all uh, who are present here so thank you for your participation thank you so much thank you priyadarshini ma'am pushkala ma'am ma'am you want to speak something ma'am pushkala ma'am ma'am no ma'am ma'am okay ma'am thank you i wish to thank uh, dr m j and university all the organizers for this opportunity it was great in interacting it was great presenting and it's been a uh, uh, very uh, this is a program that i was told you know to run it according to how i felt there was a lot of freedom with with the choice of material what i wanted to speak and it's uh, the only agenda was to ensure that uh, people get back to their reading habit so i thought there was a real good intention on the part of the organizers to you know celebrate something like this so this is a wonderful session and i thoroughly enjoyed it and i hope uh, the participants and uh, i'm really thankful to the faculty and to the participants for making this event uh, a really nice one for me a good memory thank you thank you ma'am i quote i think books are like people in the sense that they'll turn up in your life when you most need them i quote i unquote by the author emma thompson thank you for everyone i think this is the most needed workshop the bibliophile the art of reading right which is given the significance of the reading habit and how we have to choose books for our you know for our benefit so thank you ma'am thank you everyone now it's time to uh, for certificate distribution um, certif for the certificate distribution the link will be posted in the chat box you can fill in the uh, link and you can get your uh, certificates participants this is only for the participants who have participated in the workshop participate